Hi guys, we're going to continue today where we left off the last time and that is in Surah 4. Remember last time I looked at 4.3 and I looked at the um, the funny situation with the ors and the ands and how many wives you can actually marry. Um, today we're going to go a little bit further down. When we get to 4.11 we see that the Quran actually gives us some guidance as to the distribution of inheritance. Now, if it is really true that before the Quran there was no such thing and females got nothing and now at least they get something, it, well, that, that would be quite a good thing. So if you read 4.11 and, and 4.12, then you, you see that um, Allah charges you, well, he doesn't charge us anything, he just tells us what to do with this um, regarding our children, what the females get, what uh, the parents get. Um, so it, there's, there's a whole lot of rules and regulations here which make a lot of sense if there really was nothing else at the time. Um, if we read in 412, it goes into more detail now um, because now it tells us what the, if the wife dies, what happens again with the children, with the parents, with, with brothers and sisters. And I mean, you, you really need to get this right, because if you don't get it right, um, guess what's happening to you? Well, you're going to go into eternal fire, which is not such a nice prospect, I must admit. Now, if, if you read further down uh, Surah 4, you have to read all the way to the end, um, which actually sort of seems to end praising Allah, he sends you a clear light telling you what to do with the Quran and he will guide you by a straight road and then like an afterthought you get to the last one which is 4176 which seems to go back to inheritance and um, so it looks like they forgot something and then added this later um, because now if a man dies childless what happens if he has sisters or brothers something which was not taken care of in the previous verses so let's let's take a look at this because well the thing is normally what happens um people just look at the numbers and this is something that i don't want to do i really want to understand the text and not just dive straight in and see who gets a sixth and an eighth and a ninth and so on but really try and understand what it is that we see here so let's go and see what Surah 4.11 tells us about the division of inheritance, the Fara'id. Well, first of all, we are told that Allah's rule, number one, is that the male gets double what the female gets. This is what Allah wants us. This is the first thing that he wants us to know regarding inheritance. The male gets double what the female gets. Then, if we go and see if there are women more than two the women this this must be the daughters um, so if, if you ha if you have only two daughters and no male then they get two-thirds of the inheritance which well it sounds quite fair and if there is only one daughter then she gets half uh, what happens to the if there's only one son or if there's two sons how, how does that split up Okay, maybe we'll get this later. Then the parents, they each get a sixth of the inheritance if you have a son. If you don't have a son and there's only the parents, then the mother gets a third, which actually sounds quite fair. But if you do have children, then the mother gets a sixth. Um, this doesn't sound fair anymore, but well, that's the way it goes. Um, and then it says, if you have not bequeathed anything else, um, then if, if you know, if paid the debt, so you can bequeath anything that you want. But then I don't understand why you need these laws if you can say whatever you want. Hmm. Then it says your parents or your children ye know not which of them is nearer unto you in usefulness. Well, I hope this means that it doesn't really matter whether it's parents or children because they are all supposed to be treated equal. I hope that that is what it means. Now in 4.12, 
um, it starts off very well I have a lot of hope here because it says um, if the wives well if one wife well I don't think all all your four wives should should die before you get something but if one of your wives dies and if you don't have any children um, then you get one half but if you do have children then you get a fourth a quarter of what the, well she leaves after any legacy that they may have bequeathed and again they, they can say whatever they want but if they don't or if something is left then you get half of that and then unto them belong the fourth of which you leave if you have no child hmm. didn't we just handle this but if you have a child then an eighth of which ye leave no hang on this is now the husband again so the first one was the wives and now without any break or without telling us um, we are now going back to the man so now the, the man if he dies and has no children um, then they get a fourth no, but hang on just now it said that they get half or, or a sixth or a, a, quarter, no, a third though no, the mother gets a third no, I, it looks like I will have to put this into numbers after all but if you do have a child then the woman gets an eighth of what you leave after what you have decided on outside of this now if a man or a woman have a distant heir if you don't have parents or children um, like a brother or a sister so if if, uh, if I were to die and I have no children or parents or anything but I have a brother them on the mother's side so if I die but I have a brother on the mother's side then to each of them they also get a sixth and if there are more than two then they shall be sharers in the third but now what happens if you have a brother and a sister then the brother should get double of what the sister gets not share a third or this is going against 411 after any legacy that may have been bequeathed or them now this is what Allah tells you what you should do if you go to the last verse then remember this one is now the distant kindred so if a man doesn't have children and he has a sister hers is half the heritage and he would have inherited from her had she died childless all right this I don't understand and now the funny thing is I went and looked at the tafsirs I went and looked at explanation nobody explains this he would have inherited from her had she died childless because everybody just jumps into the numbers but they don't explain the words he would have inherited from her had she died childless if they have two sisters then they get two-thirds of the heritage as opposed to what was said previously I suppose and um, if there are men and women then the male gets twice of what the females get now that is important so th this we hear all the time no th this this does not make sense in in the text form I shall have to go and and find out what the real numbers are so what I'm going to try and do is assign numbers to these sentences okay so we've got the numbers so let's see what we get from the different surahs in 11 we see that the male gets double that if you have two daughters they share two-thirds if one daughter the share is one half the father gets a sixth the mother gets a sixth the mother gets a third with no sum the father we don't know the mother we don't know with a daughter mothers with brothers is the same as before the added information in 412 is that the husband gets a half and a quarter with children the wife gets a quarter without children where before she was getting one third in 11 so I don't know which one to take and she gets one eighth with a child where she was supposed to get one sixth with a son so I don't know which one to take here then on the mother's side um, the brother shares one sixth the sisters share as well and if there's more than two they share one third the added information in 4176 is that the sister gets a half if there's two sisters they share two-thirds and brothers get double I think it's high time we make an example so let's keep it very simple we have a father 
who, lo who dies leaving his wife and his parents. So a quarter for the wife, a third for the mother, a sixth for the father. Total three quarters. Where does the rest go? Okay, let me go and enter this into a, a, a professional calculator, a, an inheritance calculator. Now, here suddenly it works out because suddenly the father gets a half and the mother gets a quarter. What happened to all the Quran verses? All right, that didn't go well at all. Let me make another example and add two daughters into the whole picture. So now, because they are children, the wife only gets one eighth, and the daughters get two thirds, the parents get one sixth each. If I convert that to 24th as the common denominator, I get three plus 16 plus eight, which is 27 24th. Oops. Does the community uh, pay the missing eighths? Let's see how the calculator does. So we go and we enter the values. We take the two daughters, we take the wife, we take the father, we take the mother. Is there anything else? Any freed slaves? No. Press calculate and, oh yes, what do we get here? 8 27th and the wife gets a ninth? Where does it say in the Quran that the wife gets a ninth? So even the calculator, when he adds it up, he realizes it's oversubscribing. So they have to go and apply magic to fix it because it doesn't make sense. The Quran calculation is wrong. Now, this does not mean that everything that I'm saying here is without error. I can be making mistakes. But what I see is a Quran that is making an attempt at settling inheritance disputes, but fails miserably as the arithmetic is not thought through and leaves huge holes. It says the brother gets double of the sister's portion, but this is not applied to the parents. Yet when I change the scenario to one daughter, um, we suddenly have both uh, me and the inheritance calculator doing the same thing, getting it wrong, and then the inheritance calculator applies the special case of a father and just simply increases it. Magic. What I've heard is the argument that a man usually has the heavier burden or financial burden as he is responsible for the upkeep of the wife and the children. But what if the man is rich and single and the woman is a poor widow with children? She still gets half of what the man gets. Is this just? Is this what Allah intended? If a man dies without leaving parents or children or a spouse behind, but only a sister, then I suppose 4.12 applies have a brother or a sister to each of the two a sixth or does 4176 kick in he has a sister she shall receive a half of what he leaves is it a sixth or a half and what about the rest the islamic cal calculator says the sister inherits everything but based on what there are so many scenarios that i can dream up which all leave missing or surplus portions of the estate is this the best a god can come up with and if humans need to step in and repair the errors in the Quran calculation, why bring it up in the first place? Why bring up something where two types of verses or different verses are attributing different portions to the same person? Now, if there is a scenario where I have made a mistake, please let me know. I am not without fault. And as always, if you believe that your God exists, feel free to do so. An error in a book made by humans should not deter you. So until you find it, I'm assuming that it is a book made by humans. Thank you very much for your time.